Welcome back to the pig room, you guys, or welcome to the pig room if you are new here. Today, we are going to be doing, yet again, a, another rescue here on this channel. It's been less than two weeks since I did my last rescue, and I would not have expected that another rescue would be happening this soon. So before we jump into this video, I want to go ahead and give a huge thanks to today's sponsor. You guys know that with having so many animals comes so much mess. It's truly never-ending with all the kinds of debris on my floor. Along with making sure that my pig room and cages are clean, I find it so important to withhold the same standard to my own house and space. When RoadMe reached out, I was super ecstatic because you can never be too clean. This self-cleaning and emptying robot vacuum is unlike anything I've ever seen before, as it's an all-in-one vacuuming and mopping system. With its super 3200 PA suction and 12N pressurized mopping, these features are built into the system to promise you a clean house without having you do the dirty work. Setting up this vacuum is super simple. It comes with a full setup guide and it includes a QR code which leads you directly to the app store to download the RoadV app where you can fully control the system. I started the vacuum on the sweep setting so it could easily pick up the fine debris in my house. It left no territory unmarked and traveled all around with ease and effectiveness. As you can see, Mikey is very curious about this vacuum as well, and he was actually the main reason why I was so excited to have this vacuum. Mikey is a big shedder, and you can find dog hair in practically all corners and cracks in my house. This vacuum did such a great job at removing all the hair from the floor, as well as picking up all the other debris. This vacuum is self-emptying, which means it has built-in technology to return to its base, where it automatically empties everything it collected into a disposable bag, which can collect dust for 60 days. The bag is also antibacterial, killing 99 9.9% .9 of bacteria and odor free as well. The mop setting is potentially one of my most favorite features as it's so unique to no longer have to use traditional mops on my floor. It comes with a large tank inside of the unit which you can fill with fresh water and then place it back into the system. It has four inch large high speed spinning mops for maximum cleaning efficiency and drags on the floor to clean tough dirts. Constantly coming in and out of my house, there is so much dirt dust and other unwanted things that get tracked into my house. So having this self cleaning vacuum now removes the hassle of having me to whip out all of my cleaning supplies and stops me from getting on my hands and knees. This sleek and modern vacuum fits perfectly into my space and it's safe to say that I will probably have one of the cleanest houses in the neighborhood. If you guys are interested in purchasing this vacuum for yourself, I actually have a link down below which you guys can go ahead and check out. And thank you again to RoadMe for sponsoring today's video. You guys know me, I'm always browsing on the web to see certain rehoming situations and where pigs are currently being cared for and the care that they're getting. And this situation, uh, I will say, isn't the worst. Definitely the last one that we did was by far the worst situation I have ever done rescues from. Pretty close to Leon and Styles, actually, because they were living in what was considered to almost be a birdcage. But their situation that we recently did with the five guinea pigs was definitely, that that took the cake. This one's just a little bit under. If you guys want to go ahead and check out that recent rescue video I did, it'll be linked above. This one is not as worse. It's still not great. Um, there's just a few things that the owner could obviously learn about um, and gain knowledge of just by doing, you know, some research about this specific pig that they have. So let's just jump into it. I'm gonna be showing you guys who we are actually going to be rescuing and where this pig is coming from. So let me scooch over a little bit so I can pop up my images right here. So we are going to be rescuing a Baldwin pig. Now, when I first came across this listing on Craigslist, I honestly thought that it was a skinny pig. I'm not very informed of the skinny pig breed. Um, that was the only one that I ever knew of and I've always been interested in them. They have a very unique appearance. If you guys don't know, they're actually hairless guinea pigs. Um, skinny pigs are considered to be pigs that typically only have hair on the mouth, feet, and sometimes on the belly. But this pig that we're going to be rescuing, who is right here, he is considered to be a Baldwin pig. So that's his actual breed, a Baldwin. And that is because he has absolutely no hair whatsoever. So on skinny pigs, you'll find that the hair is on their nose and their feet, like I just said. But for him, in his case, um, his name's actually Walter. That's what the owner told me. So Walter is a Baldwin who has absolutely no fur anywhere on his body other than his whiskers. So you really do learn something new every day. And amongst my research, I was like, oh, he's not a skinny pig, he's a Baldwin. So very, very, very cute. Honestly, he looks like a small pig with his pink body. And then also 
to die for. Honestly, this is why I really fall in love with him. His little black spot on his eye. He looks like a Dalmatian. He is so freaking cute. Just looking at him, he's giving me Jojo vibes. He's giving me cute little smushy little baby. Like I, I need to hold him. I need to feel him. I've never felt a skinny pig before. I have felt hairless dogs and hairless cats before. So I would imagine he probably feels the same, but I'm very, very interested in feeling a Baldwin pig. But like I mentioned, this pig hasn't been in the worst of care. Here is what he has been living in. Now, obviously looking at it, it's not the most suitable cage for a guinea pig. I'm not entirely sure what kind of cage it is. I don't know whether it's a ferret cage or a rat cage. The actual spacing of the bars looks a little bit too thick to be for a rat cage. I feel like they could like immediately just escape from that. Um, so maybe it's a ferret cage, but nonetheless, this is definitely not a guinea pig cage. It has a ramp, it has another floor, and guinea pigs are just, they're not climbers. Some are, as we know with Winston, but um, yeah, guinea pigs don't like to climb. They like just a solid floor, one level cage where they just have everything um, and don't have to work for their food. So he's got like a food dish on top and a food dish on bottom which is not a great setup for him. And then with everything in the cage, with food bowls, that big hidey house, um, and other things in between, he's got no room to run around. He's got no room to explore. He just basically has to just sit in one spot and just accept that, which is very disheartening. Guinea pigs are very active. They're very social. And to be in a cage, especially being alone, you know, he's bored, he's lonely. I'm sure he could really use some company. Um, and also, most importantly, a proper cage. So the reason why um, I really consider this to be a rescue situation, again, this isn't the worst situation that I've ever seen. You know, I think that a guinea pig could work in this case um, and just it's the owner kind of lacking the proper research in how to actually take care of this animal. But it was the diet, the diet that caught me. The diet that he is actually currently on is Timothy Hay, which is a good thing, oranges, whole oranges. You guys can actually see like an orange rind in the cage right now. Um, and then kale. So this little boy has been eating just hay, oranges and kale for the time that this owner has had him. He said he was about two to two and a half years old. And that's really worrisome. And that's the reason why I really considered this listing to be a rescue situation. Because if you guys don't know, when it comes to let's just say normal guinea pigs with hair, they don't have as hard of a time regulating their body temperature and staying warm as, let's say, the Baldwin or the skinny pigs do. The way you can kind of look at it is that if you are, let's say, outside and it's really, really chilly, guinea pigs have that nice coat on. They have that nice fur to keep them warm. Obviously, they need things like shelter and cozy items to keep them even more warm from not getting sick or being in danger. But with them, with skinny pigs and Baldwin pigs, they have a much harder time with staying warm. So there are other things you need to implement into their care to make sure they are as safe as possible. Baldwin pigs and skinny pigs eat a lot. Um, and the reason for that is because they need to make sure that they're keeping up their body weight, <laughs> their body fat, to make sure that they are staying as warm as possible. With not having that fur coat, any slight changes in temperature really can make a drastic change to these pigs. So it's really important that you're maintaining a set temperature in wherever they're living and also providing them with cozy items. So if they do get a little bit more on the colder side, they can kind of just snuggle up and just feel really, really warm and kind of rise up their body temperature. Baldwin pigs are really not a beginner pet. Guinea pigs alone in general are not one. But on top of that, a skinny pig or a Baldwin pig is definitely not a beginner pet because there is so much more care involved with actually taking care of them. Um, another thing is that because they don't have any fur, they're more exposed to becoming more dirty. So that's when oil baths are necessary. You do have to oil them up with some coconut oil and wipe off all the dirt from their skin to make sure they're always clean. Obviously things like their ears get a lot more dirty because they're more exposed. So there's just a little bit more steps involved with taking care of them. And it just seems like this owner is not really doing so. So we are obviously going to give this boy the care that he deserves, the care that he actually needs, getting him on the right food, making sure that he's happy, safe, and healthy, and showing him really what it's like to be in good care with the pig room. So let's go ahead and get started with today's video. I went ahead and actually built the cage last night, so I'm actually going to show it to you guys. Um, we're going to be filming this entire process, as always, as I always do with all the rescues. We'll be filming the journey there. We'll be filming him the moment that we get him, the journey back, and then when we arrive home, and then also how he's settling in for the next couple days. So get excited for this video. If you guys are excited, make sure to drop a like as well and a comment down below. And let's jump into today's video. Here is his cage for the time being. I actually ran out of grids because Billy is currently 
living in the cage in the pig room. So these are all the ones that I had left. Mainly this is all the Bath and Body Works grids plus some of the ones that I got from Amazon but he's going to be living in a two by three. Now, this is an okay size for one pig. I just obviously want to make, make it a disclaimer. I believe in going well above and beyond the requirements for your pigs. So if I could, I would obviously provide him with more room. But again, we're giving him the necessary food, the correct items, fresh water, everything to make him happy. So this is definitely a good setup for him. Here we have our two by three CNC cage. I've got some little separate pieces of chloroplast on the sides just to make sure I can keep the poop and hay in the best that I possibly can. I actually got a new hay rack recently and the ones that I have actually didn't have a solid bottom, but this one does. And I actually prefer the design of this one because I feel like it'll hold the hay in a lot more. So this is really nice. I know he's going to be snacking down nonstop on all the hay that he possibly can. Again, Baldwin pigs eat a lot more than regular pigs. So he's going to be like having this refilled constantly throughout the day. Obviously with more eating comes more poop. So more spot cleanings, more full cage cleanings. This cage is not gonna stay clean for very long, but again, we do anything for our piggies to make sure that they're happy. We've got our water bottle right here for him. I do know that Baldwin pigs drink a lot more water than other guinea pigs, so this may have to be refilled multiple times a day, or I may just add another one because I do have an extra one in the back or something like that. We have his pellet dish right here, which is currently blown out because of <laughs> the sunlight that's coming in right now. So that is going to be right there. We also have his little tree chunk house in case he wants to feel nice and secure with his fleece pee pad underneath. And then also our pig mats. Our pig mats are very soft and plush. So this is going to keep him nice and warm, feel really good on his feet. I also should mention that he has been living on doggy pee pads as his bedding, which is not good whatsoever for them. Not only is it not comfortable, but it's actually dangerous for them in case they ingest them. So hopefully he hasn't been doing that. Um, but again, we will see the condition that he's in when we get him. So I know this little man Man's definitely going to prefer this. It's a lot softer, a lot cozier. He's going to absolutely have a blast in this. And then over here, I actually made this last night and I think I want to actually add it to my shop as soon as I possibly can with the next restock. But I went ahead and actually made him a cuddle sack. So it's just this nice furry cow print on the outside with the black lining. But because he has no fur, he's got to stay as warm as possible. So this is really going to help him to just snuggle up in here and just make him extra cozy and warm. So I'm sure he will enjoy this. But here here is his cage overview right now. I do need to actually pick up some toys for him. So I may do that either before we go get him or after. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna add some toys because I know that he's probably gonna want to munch down and play with some things. But I'm gonna go ahead and actually fill up his hay rack right there, put some pellets in his dish. Obviously he hasn't been getting pellets, so it doesn't matter. I don't have to wean him off anything. So I'll just add in my you know typical mix that I do with my other pigs to that and we'll get him all set. So yeah, let's go ahead and refill this, get it all nice and ready and we'll be on our way. Alrighty guys, so we are on our way way to go ahead and head to pick up this pig. We are 30 minutes away, not super far, um, but I just wanted to talk to you guys before going ahead and getting him. I've done a lot of rescues uh, <laughs> in my life, a fair round, so I definitely have experience with dealing with different types of owners and just kind of understanding the journey about how to go ahead and you know rescue the pigs and also how to approach the whole situation. So I kind of just wanted this little moment to be of teaching. Um, I have a lot of you guys actually reach out to me and ask like, hey, like I really wanna you know, rescue this pig. I don't know really where to start or I wanna make GoFundMes, but how do I get donations? And I think we'll start there. So I think one of the most important things um, and maybe the reason why obviously I get a good amount of donations when it comes to these rescues is because I obviously do have a following. Not to say that that's a deciding factor that you're gonna make you know, those donations, but I definitely think it's a big one. Also being a content creator and just people knowing that they're gonna get you know, content out of it and seeing the whole process, I think that's also very fun to them compared to someone who is just, you know, a person who's offline and going ahead and rescuing any type of animal. But I do know that there are cases where it's like, you know, super serious and people get like loads of donations to go ahead and help out certain animals, which I think is awesome. But I think it's really important to know what you're getting yourself into before it comes to rescue work because you cannot always rely on donations. Thankfully, um, for the times I have created GoFundMes, you guys have always backed me up. So I appreciate that so much. So when you're going into rescue work, it's really important to know that you should have those funds lined up in order to still do the rescue without anyone else's financial support. 
um, because this is very expensive. There's a lot of prep work involved with buying the cages and the supplies and the food and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of money. And then obviously when you get that animal in your possession, you have to take it to the vet. So it's, it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all, um, but this is obviously my job. Well, a small part of it, you know, I'm not always doing rescue work, but I do think that as the pig room, you know, I do step into these situations when I can to really help out any animal that I see is in need um, and I will continue to do so. We were actually able to do this rescue because of your guys' donations from the last rescue because I had a couple um, hundred dollars left over. So things like having the supplies ready, you know, supplying for his food, vet calls, all that kind of stuff. It's really nice because we were actually able to do two rescues under one GoFundMe, which is really awesome. And I know you guys really enjoy this. Every single time that I ask for video suggestions, you guys are always like, rescue, rescue, rescue. And obviously that's not like a viable video for me to do. Um, but when I do get the chance to, and obviously film the entire process, I know you guys really enjoy that. So yeah, that's a little bit about how the whole GoFundMe process kind of goes down. Next thing I really just wanna mention before we finish this little segment and until we get there is, you will definitely deal with lots of characters when it comes to doing rescues. I find that sometimes the worst situations, you get the most kind of like cuckoo people, which can be pretty funny. You know, I've had my fair round of that where people are just like totally out there and stuff like that. You will get people who are mean, angry, um, defensive, and some people that are just super nice and just don't have a lot of knowledge about proper care and actually don't know that they're not giving this animal proper care. But I think regardless of the person, and who they are, what they are, how they treat you. Always treat it the most gentle you possibly can. Don't tell them that you're rescuing. Don't tell them that you're saving this pig. Just tell them like, hey, I'm interested in this pig and you know, adopting it from you. Would love to give it a new life with me. Where can we meet? How can we meet? And just set it up. Never critique someone on their care because they will get very, very, very def defensive. Um, and that's probably the last thing that we want because critiquing someone on their care, it can get very, it's like a touchy subject and people can get very turned off by that. And only one wrong thing said can immediately turn them off from wanting you to actually take their animal um, and totally ruin the rescue. And I've had that happen to me, um, not because of that reason, but because of some other people. I will have that link video linked above so you guys can actually go ahead and check that out. But yeah, it's just always good when you approach these situations as light as possible. Um, sometimes you just even like, with like the LA guinea pig rescue, they just get into the situation and get out. No questions asked and just, you know, you focus on the pigs. That's, what's, that's what we're, we're really here for and what we're doing. That is the mission of today's video. We're gonna go ahead and not focus so much on the past and criticizing the owner and what they did or didn't do. Um, that's obviously not the the premise of these videos. Um, although I will talk about the things that were wrong so you guys can obviously learn from those mistakes. And you know, there's probably some people who watch my videos and have their pigs in that kind of care and realize if I'm saying that this is wrong, that they need to change it. So it's all a learning experience and this is why exactly why I do it because I think it's just as important to show the bad situations as it is the good ones. So yeah, we've got about 25 minutes until we are there to go rescue Walter. Um, funniest name ever, probably subject to change because I don't really like it that much. Cannot wait to meet him and see him and obviously get to know him and his personality. I'm really excited to see him thrive. Obviously, we don't really know the future of where he's going to end up and where he's going to go. Um, but nonetheless, I'm excited to go ahead and just move him into the pig room house. Not the pig room, but the pig room house. And maybe in the future, the pig room. We will see. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys when we're there. Oh my goodness. Guys, we just got him. The guy was so incredibly sweet. Um, he said he actually got him from a reptile expo, so surprising for the first time it's not Peko and PetSmart. He is so cool looking, and I've never felt a skinny pig before. Oh, he feels like a loaf of ham. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. Don't you love him? I love him. Oh, <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> I love him so much. He's just eating his hay. I know. We're gonna head home. He already seems like comfortable too. Like he's not, he doesn't look like a scared pig already. He doesn't give a <laughs> All right, we're gonna head home and we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty everyone. So we just got back with 
Walter. He did really well on the car ride. He was just munching down on his hay. It was actually fairly quick, the drive back, which is really nice. So I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys kind of a closer look um, at him and what he looks like and all that kind of stuff. On first initial glance um, in the carrier, he actually looks fairly good, in good condition, which is good to see. I did notice that his back nails were a little bit long, but his front ones were actually decently fine. And he looks fairly clean. I think his grease gland needs to be cleaned a little bit more. All in all, pretty good condition, which I'm really happy to see. For once, we have a, a decent in shape pig, which is really nice. Oh my God, he's so cute. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab him out of this. It's so hard to describe the feeling of a Baldwin pig. I don't know, it kind of like is overly sensitive to your senses because he just feels so incredibly smooth and you can feel like every ripple and like skin on him. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab him. I know, hello. Oh my God. So cute. Hopefully you guys can actually see him. I don't really have a viewfinder. I'm like looking across my room at the mirror. But here he is. As you guys can see, he is all pink, all hairless, um, with only this one little spot with his, I like to say, birthmark, and then his little black ear. He has a little bit of crustiness around his mouth, so I'm sure I have to fix that up. And he feels so cool. Hi, buddy. Yeah, he definitely has some crusties that need to be taken off. So I'll do that with some coconut oil and also his ears cleaned. But again, fairly good condition. And actually his grease gland does not look that bad. It's just his back nails, which have to be more taken care of. But you look so beautiful, buddy. I'm sure you're ready to go into your cage. So I think we can do that. You are so cute. All right, so let's go ahead and put him in. I'm actually probably gonna switch to my phone so you guys can get a better view, but I'll set this up on the tripod, like kind of an overview for you guys. All right, let's put him in. All righty. So let's go ahead and put him into his new cage. I'm sure he has a lot of exploring to do. I may actually get rid of this house right here just because I worry about this potentially cutting his skin. So I may replace that with something a little bit more softer and cozier, but he does have the cuddle sack for him to stay nice and cozy in. Hi, buddy. Guys, he's so cute. Everything is also sanitized, just to let you guys know. The tree trunk is, the pellet dish, the water bottle, all these grids, the chloroplast, so everything is nice and fresh, so it doesn't smell like any of my other piggies. Hi, bud. I want him to come out so you guys can like see his full, full body. <laughs> Honestly, if it wasn't for the birthmark, I don't think he would be so cute, but he's so adorable with it. It like makes him so unique. I've never seen a pig with this before. He's thinking about it. Hi, do you want to come out? You've got plenty of hay, got your pellets, your water. I do have to get him some toys actually. So I'm probably going to do that sometime tomorrow. I may have a few in the pig room in my drawer. So I'm going to go check to see what I have just because it might be nice for him to obviously chew on something. So I'll get something for him. But if I don't have anything, I'll obviously go tomorrow and get some stuff for him. So a lot better care than what he was getting before. Um, like I mentioned before, he was on pee pads and then had very minimal room to move around. This is a lot more space, one level. He's got everything he needs. Much more suitable for this guy. I don't want to spook you too much, but I just want to show people how beautiful you are. <laughs> Hello. Hi, mister. You look very cute. So I'm sure he's going to be obviously very timid for the next couple days. That is to be expected when it comes to obviously bringing a, a new pig home as they really have to get adjusted to their new environment and surroundings. So as always, when it comes to rescues, I like to leave them for a couple hours before I really start to truly interact with them and obviously just get a sense of their personality through time. So no names yet. <laughs> I don't have any lined up, um, but I obviously will be announcing that when one comes to me. So yeah, we're just gonna let him chill out in here for the time being and I will chat with you guys later.
I just got back home from painting the studio. I'm currently doing a whole expansion of the studio space. So I just got back and right now we are gonna go ahead and give our boy a nice health check. I have all of the essentials that I need for him right here. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of the products that I'm going to be using. So most importantly, we have our lettuce right here to keep him occupied while we do his health check, just so we can keep him distracted and remain calm throughout the process. I am noticing he is not drinking from his water bottle. I did text his previous owner and he had mentioned that once he started feeding whole oranges to him, he stopped drinking a lot of water. So I'm a little worried about that. I will be trying some methods that I do know for him to try and drink water. But for right now, I just have this doused in some water so we can get some hydration. Yeah, we definitely need to get him practicing from drinking from a water bottle and getting them on that. Right here we have our Mary's CBD. I like to use this on the pigs to just keep them calm throughout the process. Ignore this paint right here on my nail. So this just really helps to keep them calm throughout the whole entire health check. And it takes a couple minutes to kick in. So I like to put this on them in the beginning. We've got our nail clippers right here. His back ones are the most long ones. His front ones are totally fine. So we're just gonna go ahead and clip his back nails. We've got our ivermectin for his lice, mites, and internal parasites. Obviously there's nothing I can see on him that's giving me warnings of any of those, but we will be treating him for preventative measure. And then because he has a couple crusties on his body, like his nose and on his butt, we're going to be using some virgin coconut oil. This is unrefined and obviously no additives. It's just 100% coconut oil, all natural. And then we're gonna be using some cotton pads and also some Q-tips. He has all these kinds of crusties on his nose and also his eye and then a little bit on his butt. So this is really going to help to remove those. It is quite common for Baldwin pigs to get crusties like that just because again, they don't have any form of protection like fur. So they do need a lot more maintenance than normal pigs, especially when it comes to cleaning. So this will definitely do the trick. Pretty straightforward. I've showed you guys this process in the past, but let's go ahead and go get him and start this. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and grab him outside of this cuddle sack that he loves <laughs> so much, as you can see. I'm sorry, buddy, but we gotta do this. Now everyone can get a good look at you, mister. <laughs> do you want some lettuce? What's this? Hmm, oh, yummy. Alrighty, so first thing is first, we are going to go ahead and apply our CBD onto him just to make sure he is calm throughout this process. I recently got this one and I absolutely hate it. <laughs> this mechanism with the CBD being in here, I find very difficult to get out. You really have to like turn it. Maybe I got like a janky one, but the last two that I've gotten have always been like this. So we'll just apply that right to his ear. If you guys don't know, they have a lot of veins inside their ears. So as soon as something's applied to them, it goes directly into the bloodstream. Obviously CBD takes a little, little bit to get absorbed, but this will definitely help him out and keep him calm. So if you guys can see, he has some crusties on his eyes. I was noticing yesterday that he was actually squinting a little bit. So hopefully when we get those crusties off, that stops. And we've got our nail clippers right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip them off. They're not too bad. Now the owner said he was very sweet and I can definitely stand by that because he is very well behaved right now. He's obviously not like super social with me, That'll take time, but from the general vibes that I get for him, from him right off the bat in the last 24 hours, I can tell he's such a sweet boy. Isn't that right? Look at his little rolls. <laughs> he's so freaking cute. Oh my God, he feels so cool. Since he's munching down on that, I don't want to do the ivermectin just yet. So we'll put that off to the side and we'll start doing our coconut oil. So this should be fairly melted, which is good. So what I'm gonna do, he doesn't look that dirty, but I'm gonna apply just a tad bit to his body. I know. Does that feel good? And then we'll just get a cotton pad and just see if anything comes off. This is my first time ever cleaning a Baldwin pig. I do know the process because I've seen it done on videos a couple times. Pretty straightforward. Rub that into your butt. And then we'll do his face um, after we do his body. There we go. Alrighty, and then we'll just grab a cotton pad. Just making sure that we're being super delicate and light with him since Baldwin piggies are pretty sensitive. And this is also really great for moisturizing their body. Baldwin pigs are obviously more exposed than traditional guinea pigs with fur. So they're more prone to things like dry skin, scabs. If they're with another, um, you know, partner in their cage, they can obviously run the risk more of getting cuts and stuff like that. So you kind of just have to make sure that you're keeping a closer eye on them. So actually a fair amount of stuff came off, if you can see that. So he may look clean, but he's not. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit on his grease gland behind here and just see if I can get those crusties off. You're being really well behaved, mister. All right, so his butt looks nice and good. You look like a honey baked ham, mister. You're all oiled up. 
Now time for his eyes. I'm just gonna dab a little bit of coconut oil onto a Q-tip. So this eye looks fine on the left side. It's just this one right here that has a little bit of crustiness. And then obviously you wanna avoid getting it into the eye, but this will help to lubricate it and just get those crusties off a lot easier. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so they're just gliding right off, as you guys can see, which is really good to see. Just gonna get a clean, clean pad for him. Where are you going, bud? Here, look, you got, you got more lettuce left. Hmm. And then I just wanna check your little pee pee very quickly. Oh, mister, you got a dirty sack. So we gotta clean that out. I'm actually gonna use his cuddle sack just to prop him up a little bit easier. Not sure if the owner did it over the last, you know, two years. So we will have to do this. Put some coconut oil right on there. Oh my goodness, guys, look at that. Jeez Louise, you're being very good, buddy. You're being very good throughout this entire process. All right, so his sack looks much better now. Here's your veggies for being a little good boy. So that's what came out of his sack. All of this goopy, gross stuff. Oof. So other than that, he looks like he's in pretty good condition, which I'm very happy to see. His ears look very good. His nails look good now. His skin looks good. No crusties on his behind. Yeah, you look very good condition, buddy. <laughs> Alrighty, so last step is gonna be doing our ivermectin. So right before I do that, I'm gonna go wash my hands. So I'll be right back. <clears throat> Alrighty, hands are all nice and washed and sanitized. Go ahead and give him his ivermectin. Just get a little bit on my pinky. And again, this will treat for lice, mites, and internal parasites. All right, can I just give this to you, buddy? Look. Oh, you took that very well. Good job, mister. Very good. I'm actually noticing he actually has a little bit more crusties on his cheek. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove that. How did I get so lucky to have you as a piggy, huh? You're just a very good boy. So he is all done. Very good. He was so well behaved. I'm surprised. So that is pretty much all to it. Pretty simple and straight to the point. Hope you guys enjoyed that little segment. If you guys have any questions about health checks and how to do them or the products that I use, um, leave some comments down below. Or also I have in the description all the products that I have in my health kit and direct links so you guys can go ahead and purchase them. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put him back in his cage and I'll chat with you guys later. Alrighty guys, so we have now officially had this little man, I was about to actually say his name, uh, for the last two days. He's been settling in very, very nicely and enjoying his time here. He's still not drinking from the water bottle, so I will have to figure out some ways for him to learn how to. I actually have been holding up the actual water bottle to where he's sleeping and he will actually drink it. So basically he's being like bottle fed right now and obviously that can't be a good thing for a guinea pig. The owner let me know that once he started giving him like oranges, like full on oranges, I think because they had so much juice, he stopped drinking from the water bottles. So I think he's just kind of accustomed to that, but now being in my care, this man's no longer getting like full entire oranges, so he's gotta learn. But we did pick out a name for him, um, or should, I should say probably I did. Um, I thought long and hard about what was going to fit him. Obviously looking at him, I was like, he needs like the cutest name ever. So I came up with the name Ollie. So his name is Ollie, O-L-L-I-E. I think it suits him perfectly. A few people were actually asking me if it's short for Oliver, and I actually do like Oliver, but I do find myself calling him more Ollie um, and I just feel like it, it works so well for him. So this is Ollie. Um, again guys, he's two years old, Baldwin pig, super super cute. He feels so incredibly weird to hold just because I'm so used to like having fur in my hands and now it's just complete skin. Um, but yeah, he is just one of the most sweetest and coolest boys ever. 
you guys will definitely be getting a lot of update videos on him. And I'm also not entirely sure what's going to happen with this little booger right here. But I think we could all we can all know what's gonna happen. Maybe. We'll see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys again for being a part of another rescue and also the people that donated for the last rescue because you guys made this possible. Um, I'm sure there will be many more in the future, so get excited. But for right now, I am slowing down on the rescues. Feel free though, just to keep continuing to actually send me a listings online so I can repost them because it does still get piggy saved. I just need to take a break just because I have a lot going on, so many projects I'm working on, and also preparing for my shop to have a massive, massive restock. Um, so get excited for that. So go sign up for our newsletter as well at thepigroom.com so that way you guys know when we are going to be launching all of our products. He's shivering. He probably wants to leave, so I'm going to wrap this up. Follow us on Instagram. I am constantly posting all kinds of updates and really cute photos of my piggies there. And yeah, everything's linked down below so you guys will be able to follow us on everything that's down there. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos every single week. And until then, I hope you and your piggies are happy, safe, and healthy. Bye, guys. Thank you.